Rejoice. Rejoice. Just in case you didn't know. In the Lord sometimes. Always. Always. So if you came in burdened, the Bible also tells us the joy of the Lord is our So we're going to go before the Lord in joy and worship him this morning. Amen. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say, again I say, rejoice in the Lord always and again I say, again I say, rejoice. We're going to bless the Lord this morning because he's worthy. Amen. Come bless the Lord. Come bless the Lord. Come. 
worthy of a good workout. He's worthy. He's worthy. I'm going to say it again. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. We just want to love on him.
this high I can search the earth below but there's no one come on and sing it with me there's no There is no one, there's no one. We can search. We can search heaven, the you know, worship song said. And we can search earth, but there is no one. There's no one. You know, in, in the book of Genesis, God is asking Abraham to be holy because without holiness, we won't be able to see the Lord. But in his gracious, Jesus told us that he'll send us a helper. A helper that can help us be holy as he is holy. Because there's no one, there's no one like our God. There's no one like him. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that in your love for us, Father God, you saw that we were not going to be able to do this on our own, Father God. And that's why you send us, Father. You send us the Holy Spirit to help us, Father God. And we just thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us, Father God. And we know, Lord, that it's not by our abilities, but it's by you, Father God. It is by your Holy Spirit that we're able to do and be and just serve you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We just praise you for that. Holy are you, Father. Holy are you, Father, and we just thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Arlene Valdivia, and I am one of the ministers here on New Day Christian Fellowship. Thank you. Thank you. And before I, I, I move on, I just want to greet our online guest. I do want to thank you for joining us today. I pray that you will be blessed. I pray that the Holy Spirit will be just meeting you where you are and whatever need you may have. But I do want to tell you that if you need to connect with us, you can do so by texting to New Day Connect at 94000. If you need prayer, or if you just want to know more about our ministry, just go ahead and text New Day Connect at 94000. And also, I do want to uh, make sure that we acknowledge, uh, I, I just love that I'm serving under the leadership of our very own Bishop Dr. Tony Dunn and First Lady Jackie. And we thank God for them every day and for all that they're doing for God's kingdom now, if we have anyone here visiting us for the very first time, we want to greet you. We want to say welcome. So if you could just kindly raise your hand just to let us know that you're here. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, you know, the ushers are giving you a first-time visitor's card. If you could just fill it out. And then at the end of service, you will be dismissed first. And we actually do have a little gift for you. Just a way of saying thank you for joining us this morning. And um, family, you know how we do it here. Let's stand. Let's greet one another. And God bless you.
ready for the word? I am also. Let's bow our heads and let's go before the Lord. Father in heaven, thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to hear from you, dear Lord God. These amazingly awesome people did not come to hear from me. They came to hear from you. So, Father, according to your word, I thank you for giving me a word in season. Thank you also, Lord, that your word right now is being sown on good soil. And I'm trusting you, Heavenly Father, for a 30, 60, and 100-fold return. So my prayer is that everyone here in person and online has ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, years ago, especially like in the 90s, I re recall this, sometimes sitting up late at night, and I was sitting up late at night because I didn't have no money and I was scared about the next morning. I was so afraid of the next morning, I couldn't go to sleep the night before. And, and so I, I noticed something just continually. So um, you guys ever seen this before in late night? There was this uh, camera graphic. That would be these products. This guy was always hawking, and, and he would tell you about how great whatever this cleaner was or whatever this, this object was, and then he gets you all hooked, but then he says, but wait, there's more. And then you go in the store, and then, you know, you're going down the aisle, and you'll see this particular section as seen on TV. And there were all these products, but what stuck in my mind is, but wait, there's more. So to, the sermon title today is, but wait, there's more. Now, more of what, Bishop? Now, this is our year of increase, increase okay? Now, so let's see what Jesus had to say about this. Now, there's pretty much two groups I'm talking to, even online. There's some of you guys that have been in a word quite for an extended period of time. And I think this is going to be a refresher for you. There's some others that this might be a new subject to you or maybe you're not quite sure about. But what I'm going to ask is that you listen up well, and then next Sunday, when this is released again online, that you go back and review it. And you guys that are in life group, I pray that you really prayerfully consider what I'm saying. This is our year of increase, amen? So I'm going to talk to you about the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead, okay? Now, what we, the mistake we make, and I appreciate our intentions and how we, what we're trying to do, but when we're trying to understand the Trinity or, or God in his fullness, we often use natural things, things here on this earth that we are familiar with, to try to better understand the things in the spirit realm, which we're going to come up short. We're going to come up short. And so this is when our faith really has to kick in because the spirit realm is the dominant, predominant, real deal, if you would. Where we live is subordinate. But because we feel we have a lock on this, we got it figured out. You know, here we are in 2024. We got cars that drive themselves. You know, we got satellites. We, we go into the moon. We, we, we plan on to go to Mars. And we're feeling pretty good about us. But as, in, as intelligent and as wise as we are, as scholarly as we are, and particularly in this congregation, is, is so many of you guys either have received your doctorate or in a doctoral program somewhere, and that's exciting but nothing at Harvard, Yale, Princeton, or anywhere else, Cambridge, wherever you want to go, can tap into what God has done. We all understand. So who am I to argue or to disagree? Now, my experience of the Holy Spirit, I call him the enabler. The enabler, okay? Let me prove it to you. Go to John chapter 14. Now, who is, who is speaking? Jesus. Who is he speaking to? His disciples, okay? Now, he's preparing to go to the cross. He came to die, to reconcile mankind back to the Father, okay? To get us back to our original state. Everybody knows that, I think, okay? But now here's the, okay, let me, let's go. John 14, uh, 16 and 17. And G this is Jesus speaking, and he says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another, say another, and this, is, this word another means the same as me. Got it? And the, Okay, this, I'm going to need some nodding because I need you to get this today, okay? He will give you another advocate. An advocate is somebody that's on your side. If I committed a crime, and I'm not going to commit no crime, but I will want the best lawyer on my side. I need me Johnny Cochran.
Say what you want. I meet and eat me, Johnny Cochran. <laughs> Give you another advocate who will never leave you. Yeah. 17. Who is this? He is the Holy one, two, three. He's the Holy who leads you into all deception. Yeah. Now, why do I need to be led into the truth? Most likely, no, no, I'm not going to talk about y'all. I'm going to talk about me. For me, I might be deceived. Because, see, my pain, my preference, all of that influences my interpretation of whatever situation. It does. But I need the truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now. And what's the next word? So subsequently, we'll be where? So Jesus is telling these 12 something that's going to transpire. Got it? Go to chapter 16, John 16. John 16, verse 12. My wife has the laptop. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Online, just had a little glitch. You know, brother forgot to do something early this week. Got up on stage and wasn't prepared to go, but we got to figure it out now. Okay. You guys in John 16? Yeah. Verse 12. Now, and wait, there's more. Jesus said there is so much more. Who is he talking to? Did Peter walk on water? Did that mean he had a lot of faith? Okay, well, look. Okay, y'all, come on, look. Uh, online, give me a minute. Just y'all hold. Hey, y'all, what's up? Okay, okay, all right. And spirit of slumber, you better shake that off. Yeah. Them Dodgers playing tonight, I bet you all y'all gonna be cheering. <laughs> but Jesus is telling Peter and this group, there is so much more I want to tell you. I find that fascinating. You, they've been with Jesus three and a half years, and there's more? There's more. But you can't bear it now. So how is it you let me go up on a mountain, Peter, James, and John, and I see you transfigure. I see that. I hear the voice from heaven saying, you know, this is my son. I'm pleased. And then I see Moses and Elijah who were dead. How is it I have that kind of supernatural experience and you're telling me there's something else? I need you to think about this for a moment. 13, when the spirit of truth comes, meaning he ain't here yet. Do we see that? Okay, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He keeps telling us this. He will not speak. Oh, he will not speak on his own, but he will tell you. So he's going to speak. The spirit of God will speak. And, and if I need, if anything, I need the spirit of God speaking to me. I got enough people on Fox, on CNN, CNBC, and all the people. Everybody's talking. But they really ain't saying nothing. Amen. Now, most of us in America are concerned about the next four years. I'm concerned about the rest of my life in eternity. Amen. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the what? Hmm. Everybody promising me something. Okay. 14. He will bring me glory. Wait a minute, he's going to bring Jesus glory by telling you whatever he's received from me? Hmm. 15, all that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will tell you. So if the Spirit of God is speaking, I want to know what he's saying. I'm, 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 the day of me trying to be successful, that ship has sailed. Because success defined by American terms, that's cool. But wait, there's more. The infilling of the Holy Spirit, listen to me. Next bullet point. The infilling of the Holy Spirit is a subsequent work of grace. After, say after, after. salvation. So it's like, wait, what's up with this? So Jesus came, I might have eternal life, right? 
So if I, based on the scripture, my understanding of it and what I've been taught, my daddy was a pastor, taught me this, okay? I was eight years old, and I remember being at a um, Zion Mission Baptist Church in Cedar Grove, um, Cedar, in Cedar Grove, Louisiana, outside of Shreveport, and I was eight, and t- Pastor Tommy Strange from Kansas City, Kansas, was preaching at Revival. And I remember clearly as an eight-year-old understanding, in order to get to heaven, I need Jesus. And I walked forth, and I remember my dad and everybody was shocked. I got it. I understood it. I remember taking a bath the night I was supposed to get baptized, and I was practicing. (laughs) I remember that. It was clear to me. I was so ready, holding my breath. I recall that. So I knew when I went and got baptized, I knew I was in. But between being eight, and let's say I live to 98, that's 90 years, and I need me the Holy Spirit. I learned a long time ago not to try to do life without him. And I want to show you from the scripture that this work of grace, we're saved by what? Grace. Not works. I can't get saved by my works. Oh, see, I've been reading the Bible. Okay, hallelujah. I'm saved by what? Okay, so the work of grace is God's supernatural ability to get something done on my behalf when I am unable to. I can't save myself. I mean, a few minutes ago, I looked back at the AV team. It's like, what's up with y'all? And they looking back at me like, what's up with you? You the one who forgot the slide. <laughs> what? No, no, they didn't do that. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. <laughs> Wasn't that. But, but I mess up. I come up short. Make mistakes, forget stuff, sometimes get irritated and bothered. I think Elder Joyce, when she was receiving an offering, come on, let's shake it off. Were you talking to me? <laughs> You're like, yeah. I heard you. And I literally, like, you know, she's right. Let me let this go. Shake it, let it go. Second bullet point the Holy Spirit is our enabler for life, ministry, and purpose. Enabler. And, and it's like you trying to do life. You know what? When, when you see those auto races, you know, they go around the track, and they come in for a pit stop. Then a pit stop, what? If it's Formula One, like three seconds. I think NASCAR is like 10 seconds. They get gas, tires get changed, and all of that. And, and they, the way to get those tires off is the, what's called a pneumatic tool. Boom, 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 boom. Well, nowadays, one, boom, and pull that tire right off. Now, if somebody go, we go outside today and somebody has a flat tire, how long is it going to take us to change that tire? <laughs> but when you use a pneumatic, P-N-E-U-M-A-T-A-C, however you spell it, pneumatic, that's pneuma, the same thing as spirit. So I'm going to do life with the Holy Spirit. Y'all can go out there and take two weeks trying to change the tire if you want to. And that's how many of us are doing life. So what happened after Jesus went to heaven? He ascended back to heaven. He's like, okay, guys. Now, what he did, the Bible tells us this in the book of Acts chapter 1. He was on the earth 40 days after his resurrection. Mission accomplished, right? Bloodshed, sins forgiven, done deal. It's a wrap, right? Why did he stay here 40 days? Well, the Bible says talking about the things of the kingdom. There's some things they still needed to be, have understood. Now, after 40 days, he goes and he ascends, right? But he tells him, don't do anything until you get in do with power from on high. How do you tell somebody that walked on water, don't do nothing? I got something else for you. But wait, there's more. Go with me, please, Acts chapter 2, verse 1. I want to show you four instances. Because today when you go home, I want you to fully understand that the infilling of the Holy Spirit is a subsequent work of grace that comes after salvation. And I'm going to tell you something. Ain't nobody can talk me out of this. They can't. I'm sorry. I'm too far. I, I'm so far up in this. There, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, it, it's not. It's not. The mistake they made was let me learn how to read. Acts chapter 2, you guys, in verse 1. So now Jesus told them to wait there. There are 120, say 120, 120 people in the upper room. Jesus told them to wait. This happens 10 days after he goes back to heaven. In this 120 is Jesus' mama, Mary. 
Mary, woman of grace and woman of favor. Mary, God filled with the Holy Spirit. Mary, Mary, Mary. Guess who else? His brothers were there. Oh, that's a whole nother message. Let me get back to my notes. Okay, verse one. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together where? Okay, 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 look, look at the screen. <laughs> Two, suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like, what looked like, then said it was what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. Verse four, and some of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, oh, let me, oh, everyone, everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. And began speaking other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Now, it's not about tongues today. It's about the fact. I need you to get, and I want you to go home today with an understanding that there's a second work of grace. And for you guys that have already experienced this, I want you to really meditate on, are you fully stewarding well what we've been given? Are you spirit-led right now? Because you can be spirit-filled and not be spirit-led. That's why I spent so many months teaching about the soul. The mind, the will, the emotions. It amazes to me how many spirit-filled people have meltdowns. That's why I don't get excited at the, when somebody manifests a supernatural or something happens. So, you still act an infantile. And, a manifestation, and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is not an indication of spiritual maturity. That's why I spend so much time on the soul. We all get excited about being filled with the Spirit. Oh, the Spirit was moving. But did he move you enough where you're going to shift and change and transform? Or are you going to leave it the same person you've always been? Everybody was filled. So this is the 120. This is the first. This is the first one. Everybody see this, right? Go with me, please, to Acts chapter 8. Acts 8. Now, those are the Jewish people, and, and, and Peter got up and preached. 3,000 people joined the church. The church is rocking and rolling, you know, and all, all this kind of stuff happening. And then about, I don't know, 8, 9, 10 years later, there's a persecution breaks out on the church in Jerusalem. And, and one particular guy, we got an instance here, a man named Philip, he, he get, he's getting out of Dodge because there's great persecution coming against the Christians in the city of Jerusalem. Got it? Picked this up in verse uh, 12. And he, he, now, the second point, my second bullet point is my second point is that the Holy Spirit is now falling on the Samaritans. And 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 in the modern vernacular, I'm gonna use the word, and it, it sometimes it can be kind of down, um, it sounds negative. I'm gonna just call them a mixed breed. Fair enough? Okay, not fully Jewish. Got it? So now we're gonna get in what I call in my, in my missions background, cross-cultural missions. Watch this. You, you guys there, Acts 8:12? Okay. But now the people believe Philip's message. These are, these are the Samaritans, okay? They believe Philip's message of good news concerning what? Jesus and the what? Jesus As a result, many men and women were what? Jesus. Did they believe? Okay, it's no trick questions. I just, I just, okay, I need you to know, I need, when you leave here today, I need to know you got it. That's all. As a result, many men and women were baptized. They got baptized. Why did they get baptized? Because they, they heard the, the gospel message. And they received Jesus. 13, then Simon, who was, who was a sorcerer, himself believed, and he was baptized. He began following Philip wherever he went, and he was amazed by the signs and great miracles Philip performed. So they got the miraculous going on. Yeah, it's happening, right? So people getting saved, baptized, miracles are happening. But look at verse 14. When the apostles in where? Heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, the gospel message, received Jesus Christ. They sent who? Peter and John. Why did Peter and John go? Weren't the people saved? They were saved, right? Mission accomplished, done deal. But wait, there's more. 15, as soon as they arrived. They prayed for these new believers to receive the Holy Spirit, meaning when they received, they accepted Christ the message, they did not get the Holy Spirit. Do the math. You see it? 16. 
Jack ain't got the password. You don't need me to do the laptop. So y'all can just, just I, I'm going to do it after service. Y'all, I got it. Okay, yeah, no, no, I'll, I'll get it. Just hold on. Thank you. I appreciate you being proactive. Okay, yeah, amen. Again, online, just a little, little glitch with audio. We got it, though. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. They, see how diligent they're trying to get it done? Thank you. Can we give the AV team a hand, please? So, 15 again, as soon as they arrived, um, they prayed for these new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. 16. Look at 16. Y'all see 16? The Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them, but they were baptized believers. For that only, what do you mean only? I mean only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That only, meaning that there is more Seventeen. Then Peter and John laid their hands upon these believers, and they received the Holy Spirit. Why did they make that trek all the way? You got to see a map. Why did they make that trek all the way from Jerusalem up to Samaria just for that event? It must be significant. What did Jesus tell them? What did they experience that they felt the need to go and lay hands on people that wasn't quite like them? The people had eternity. They had their salvation secure. They believe in Jesus, right? Right. Some of y'all are like, wait, what is Bishop? I'm not going to pull nothing on you. In a few minutes, I'm going to finish. We're going to pray, and y'all can go home. But you're going to go home, and I want you to contemplate and think and meditate and go back over this. Because, see, here's the thing. We make this be like, oh, we're going to have an altar call, and ah, everybody. No, no, no. I'm doing that today. Calm down. You, it, there's nothing kooky going to happen. Calm down. I've been in those environments. I understand that. And people make momentary emotional decisions. No, in the old school, the, like the Great Awakening and those, those big revivals way back in the, the 1800s and all that, they would send you home and you would think about this. You need, to make your, you need to make sure you really know what you're about to get into. That's why Jesus said count the cost because there's some stuff you're going to have to give up. That's why people come down, I'm so sorry. The only reason you're sorry because you're in some kind of difficult crisis right now. You need Jesus to deliver you. You come down crying because you don't like what's going on. You go back and somebody says they're sorry to you. Somebody you ain't even supposed to be seeing. Somebody you don't even want no, no people to know that you wit right there. They just say they're sorry and all of a sudden you're feeling better. Oh, no, no. You need to come down here and have an altar call and go back and tell Larry, look, I'm through with you. You ain't going to be my husband. Go back home to your wife. What is wrong with you anyway? Minister Daniel accompanied me yesterday. He was hanging out with me yesterday. And so when I got to the men's conference at Pastor Mark Greenhouse Church, of course, that's a church we oversee. He launched out from us, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years ago, say. And I walk in. I'm greeting the elders, greeting other ministers. I know them. And one of the guys gets up, and he's sharing with everybody how influential I've been in this life. Now, nobody at New Day knows that. So what I'm trying to tell you that I ain't just talking about New Day. And when I say I oversee 60-some churches, I see the members of those churches, too. You don't know how immature the body of Christ is and daily dealing with this and Jesus has said I got something for you and you get in resistance to it why you ain't that smart show me your universe in fact most of us the only thing we've ever created is chaos People been living here. I remember one guy told me, been living in California 40 some years. We don't know anybody. Why? How long you been at your job? What do you mean you don't know anyone? Let me get, Acts 10. 10. I got to wrap up. Acts 10. Acts 10. And by the way, no one's done anything to me. <laughs> no one's bothered me. Jackie's great. Mom, we had a great time with my grandson last night. He running around. He just loves his pop and climbing all over me. I'm fine. I just want everybody to get it. Okay, third thing. Here we go. Now, God, now the Holy Spirit is going to fall on some God-fearing Gentiles. Gentiles is non-Jews. Okay, you guys in Acts 10, 44. Even as who? The one that walked on water and climbed the mountain and all that. Even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on, upon some of them who are listening to the message, the message of, of salvation, okay, 15. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the who? So we got the Jews, the half-breed Jews, and now the non-Jews. Do we see this? 
All right. Six. For they heard them speaking what? In other tongues and doing what? Got it. Okay, go with me, please. Acts chapter 19. Now, now watch this. Now, this number four, I'm about to wrap up, okay? Now, I want you to see from this that the baptism or the infilling of the Holy Spirit was normal with the first church. Got it? This is just part of what they did. It's just, it's just, it wasn't like that big of a deal. We make such a big deal out of it today. You guys in 19? Verse 1. While Apollos was in Corinth, remember last week we talked about Apollos, okay? Okay, right, okay? And he went back to Corinth, and that's a whole other deal. What's that next, what's that next name? Apollos. So we were talking about Peter and John, right? Yes. yes, we were talking about Peter and John. No, true. okay, all right. So Peter and John, now we're talking about Paul. Paul wasn't with Peter and John when Jesus ascended and all that. Paul met Jesus later on. We got two separate, distinct apostle, group of apostles. Got it? All right, watch this one. Paul traveled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus. Think of, go get a map when you get home and look at modern-day Turkey. He's a long way from Jerusalem, long way from Israel. Paul traveled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus. On the coast there, he found several heathens, unregenerated pagan idol worshipers. Oh, believers. Oh, yeah, there it is, believers, right. Verse 2, watch this. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? Stop right there. That means they could have believed and still not received the Holy Spirit because he's asking him. See, you can't talk me out of this. It's, 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 <laughs> there's more. <laughs> he asked, he, did, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? He asked them. No, they replied. We haven't even heard that there was a Holy Spirit. I remember I was asked this question in an office in Pasadena in 1985, 86. I haven't heard of the Holy What do you mean? Verse 3. Paul says, then what baptism did you experience? Yes. And they replied, the baptism of John. And John was, John was John the baptizer. He was the one baptizing for repentance, right? Okay, verse 4. Paul said, John's baptism called for repentance from sin, but John himself told the people to believe in the one who will come later, meaning who? Jesus. All right, and then what did Jesus say? Look at verse 5. And as soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of who? Lord Jesus. Okay, in verse 6, what's that first word? Jesus. That means something happened subsequently, Right? Ms. Monica Hernandez, you're an English teacher, right? And, and then means something that comes afterwards, right? Am I doing, am I, do I have this correct? Doing well. I'm doing well, thank you. All right. <laughs> then when Paul laid his hands on them, who? The Holy uh -huh. Came on them and they spoke in other tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. So my question today and wrap up is, how is the Holy Spirit relevant today? Next bullet point. You got to understand the power and purpose of the Holy Spirit. I do my best to live spirit led. I'm making decisions constantly, constantly, constantly. So go to Acts chapter 1. Let's see what Jesus said. Acts 1 8. This is what Jesus said. The disciples had said to them, because they were worried about some political stuff. Like, Bishop, don't, don't you don't you concern about Trump and 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 and, and you know what? You know, he, he he's he's doing all kind of stuff. He's selling everything. Does he really have money? How does he inherit 400 and some million and then he filed bankruptcy six times? How do you how, but Bishop, don't you? And then the other side, oh Kamala Harris, she slept her way to the top. How can you trust someone? Nobody. That's where y'all stuck. I ain't mad. I was talking about the next four years. I'm talking about the rest of my life. And I'm not discounting that. Please, I need you to understand that if you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, he will guide you into all truth. Because Democrats and Republicans be lying. No. And I love America. I ain't going nowhere. I go and visit, but have you noticed I always come home? Have y'all ever noticed Bishop and First Lady Jackie always have a return ticket? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Acts 1-8, you guys there? Watch this. Jesus says, but you will receive what? Power. They didn't already have power? Ooh, wait a minute, hold on. 
Hold on, wait a minute, hold up. But wait, there's more? I can walk on water? You know, you, you let me see into the spirit realm. We laid hands on sick people and they recovered. We cast out demons. But you're saying, wait, there's some more power, more ability? Who is saying this? Oh, y'all scared still. Jesus! <laughs> but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I'm getting in that line. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get there early for that one. And you will be my what? And silly Tony Dunn, ignorant Tony Dunn. And in, in, 19, in 2002, I'm in the Dominican Republic on my first mission trip. And I'm so excited because I'm telling the missionary, Prince Parker, that, yeah, now I just found out about missions like the year before. I'm telling a man that's been on the mission field longer than any other black man that we're going to be witnesses. And he looks at me, right like, silly man, do you know what witnesses means in Greek? I'm like, and I thought like going back to like Johnny Cochran, because I like Law and Order. That's my TV show, Law and Order. I love me some Law and Order. That's the only show I watch reruns on, okay? I, I just like me some Law and Order. I know what a witness is, Dr. Parker. Or did I? And it's a Greek word that pretty much means martyrs. And all of a sudden there, I'm hit with, are you willing to die for this? And if you wonder, like, why them all them apostles died crazy? Why were they so adamant? What did they know that I don't know? Why is it you so easily offended? There's somebody I'm wondering if they're going to come back to this church. A little something happened, and they don't even know I know who they are. And by the way, pastors around here, we talk. Don't think you're going to slide from one church to the other without me getting a phone call. We look out for each other. You would be my witnesses, and many of us as Christians, we ain't dying to self. It's all about me, my best life now. Seven steps to creating my, the best version of myself. You better die. <laughs> that's the best version of you, a dead you. Because that's when you become fruitful. And you would be my witnesses, telling people about me around the corner, everywhere I go. And... Where? Notice how what Jesus said, how the Holy Spirit started. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. And then Paul takes it all the way to the upper coast of Ephesus and to the othermost parts of the earth, and to the ends of the earth. For me, I want his power. I got some ability. I guess I do because y'all here. And y'all don't mind looking at me, you know, because there's a million YouTube channels, but you're here. But I would be a plum fool. To rely on Tony Dunn. I would be selling myself short. I would not be able to tap into all that he has for me because I, 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 my house is bigger than my brother's house, so I must be doing bigger than, better than him, right? No. Oh, I can't measure my success by the size of my square footage? How many bedrooms and bathrooms? I can't do that. The car I drive, the year to make the model, I can't, I can't measure, I can't. In America, I can but wait, there's more. Bow your heads, please. Father God, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can clap to him. It's okay. We thank you, Heavenly Father, <laughs> for your word. And my prayer to Lord God is that we will fully understand that the infilling of the Holy Spirit is a second work of grace that's subsequent to salvation, dear Lord God. And Father, my prayer for this congregation and those online, dear Lord God, is that we will fully understand that, yes, we have eternity sealed up once we receive Christ. To them that receive him, he gave the right and the privilege to become the children of God. But Father, I thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth while we're here on this earth. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that our group will meditate on that. Let that sink into their hearts and open themselves up to all that you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. We pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Now, this is the part in the service where you can participate through your giving. Here at New Day, we have several ways to give. First, you can text us by texting New Day Corona to 77977. Or you could visit us online at newdaycorona.org. You can also mail your gift to 1114 West Ontario Avenue, Corona, California 92882. Or 
you can head over to the App Store and download our New Day app. Here at New Day, we also have an offering confession. Let's declare it together. Father, we honor you as we present to you your tithes and our offerings. You are the authority over all we have. We give an obedience to you, O God, who causes all grace to abound towards us. For we have sufficiency in all things, and abundance for every good work. There is no lack in our lives. For we give to the poor and support the work of missionaries. Therefore, as we sow our financial seed, we thank you for the harvest of wisdom to manage our financial affairs, financial favor, oil and mineral rights, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and promotions, favorable settlements and rebates, the return of what's lost or stolen, scholarships and grants, increased sales and commissions, the miracle of debt cancellation, favorable financial surprises, every bill and every debt paid. We declare that we not only have enough, but we have more than enough. We declare that we have enough to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the whole earth. For we are blessed to be a blessing, and we will care for the widows and orphans. In Jesus' name, amen.